Welcome back to Web Dev Simplified. My name is Kyle, and in this video, we're going to use HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to make tabs in only 12 minutes. And I'm not going to mess around with any extra information that you don't need, because at this channel, I like to make things as simple as possible. So while these tabs are going to look a little bit ugly, it's perfectly okay because they're completely functional and super easy to plug into whatever site you want to use them in. So without any further ado, let's get started now. Before we start coding this project, let's take a look at what the actual project will look like. As you can see, we have our tabs over here on the right, which when we highlight over them, it's just going to hover a little color to let us know we can click on it. And when we click on it, it's going to show us that tab content, as well as highlight the tab that we've currently selected. So to get started making these tabs, the first thing we need to do is of course create our HTML page. So let's just create a page, we're going to call it index.html. And if we click exclamation point and hit enter, it's going to default all of this code for us if we're using Emmet inside of Visual Studio Code, which is the default for Visual Studio Code. Next, we can just type in our document title, which in this case is just going to be tabs. And now inside of the body, we can actually get to work creating our tabs. And this is actually going to be straightforward. What we're going to have is we're going to have a list up here, which is going to be an unordered list. So let's create that unordered list. And inside of here, we're going to have list elements. And these list items are going to be the first one is just going to say home. The second one here is going to say pricing. And then lastly, we have the third one. And this one is going to say about. Now that we have our actual items out of the way, we can create our different content down here. And to do that, we're actually going to wrap all of them inside of a single div, which is going to have the class here of tab content. And then each one of these is going to have a single div, which is going to have our content. So this first one is going to be our home content. So let's give it an ID here of home. And then inside of here, we can first put in our content, which in our case, we're just going to have an H1 that says home. And then we're just going to have a paragraph tag. And this is just going to say something along the lines of this is the home. There we go. Let's copy this down a couple more times making sure that we keep this inside of our tab content section. So we have our home, we have our pricing, and we have our about, and up here, we're gonna type in pricing and about for our different titles. And for our actual page description, we can say some information on pricing. And over here in the about, we can just say, whoops, let me tell you about me. There we go. And now let's start up this application. We can just open this with live server if you have that extension installed in Visual Studio Code. And as you can see, we have our three different tabs up here, as well as the different content for our tabs. Obviously, this is not correct because things are showing where they shouldn't be, but we can fix that pretty easily by using some JavaScript. So let's include a JavaScript tag. We can just come in here, we can type in our script, and we want first to have a source of script.js, which will be the JavaScript file we create. And we also want to make sure we defer the loading of this so it happens after our HTML is loaded. Now let's create that JavaScript, script.js. And inside of here, we're gonna put all the code for making our tabs work. So the very first thing we need to do is we need to build it whenever we click on a tab. So if we click on home over here, we wanna show this home section and hide everything else. So the first thing we need to do is be able to have our tabs link up to a specific section. And that can actually really easily be handled in our HTML by using data attributes. So we can come in here and we can just say data, whoops, data tab target. And this is going to be the selector that selects our tag. In our case, we have IDs on all these. So we can just make this one select our home ID. And we can do the same exact thing, just copy this down for pricing and about. So we can select the pricing tag. And down here, we can select the about section. So now each one of these tags has a target that selects the specific div that we want to show in our case, home, pricing, or about. So now inside of our script, we can select all those tags. We can just create a variable called tags. And we can use the document dot query selector all, which is going to allow us to select everything that has a specific selector. In our case, we want to select where it's data tab target. Whoops, target, if I can spell that correctly, there we go. And this right here is all of our different tabs. Make sure we spell it tabs. And what we want to do is we want to loop through all these tabs. So we can just say tabs dot for each, and we're going to get a single tab. And for each one of these tabs, what we want to do is we want to add an event listener. So we can just say tab dot add event listener. Every time that we click on the tab, we want to run the code inside of this function here. So what we want to do is we just want to show that particular tab. And that's actually fairly straightforward. First, we can get the target. This is going to be from our data attributes. So we can just say tab dot data set, whoops, dot data set dot tab target, which is what we set right here in our HTML. And this is going to be the selector that we can use with a document dot query selector. And we just pass it to the here just like this. And essentially this is going to get us that tab element, for example, this home element or this pricing element based on whichever tab that we clicked. 
because of this tab target that we set here. And then all we want to do is show that target. So an easy way to do that is to add a class. So we're just going to say target.classlist.add, and we want to add the active class, which we're going to style using CSS to make it so that this is actually visible. So let's create a CSS style sheet here. We're just going to call it styles.css. Make sure we include that inside of our HTML. Just like this, we have an href, which links to styles CSS. And lastly, we need a rel of style sheet so that the browser knows that this is a style sheet and not something else. And now inside of here, what we can do is first, actually, we should probably add a class to each one of these different tabs. And actually, instead of a class, I think I'm going to actually use a data attribute. So we can just say data tab target, actually tab content. And that's exactly what this is. Each one of these is going to be a tag target. There we go, tab target. And now instead of our style sheets, we can actually select that by saying data tab content. And inside of here, what we want to do is First, make them absolutely hidden. So now if we save this, you can see all of our different tab content has disappeared. But if we have an active one, so for example, data tab content, and we want to check for if we have the active class set to that, then we want to make it visible. So we just come in here and we can say display is going to be block. Now if we save that, you'll see that nothing changes over here, and that's because we haven't actually set that active class. But as soon as we click on one of our tabs, for example, home, you'll see that that home is now being shown up. But we have a problem. Once we click on another tab, that tab is being shown up, and none of the old tabs are actually disappearing. So let's write the code that's going to make our old tabs disappear whenever we click on a new tab. And to do that, we need to actually select all of our different tabs. So inside of our JavaScript, what we can do is we can get our tab contents. So we can say in here we want to get tab contents, and we want to set that equal to document dot whoops dot query selector all, and we just want to select on that data attribute which we just set, which is data tab content. So now we have a variable here, tab contents, which contains all of the different contents for our tab down here. And all we need to do instead of here is we want to loop through each one of those. So we can say for each tab content, what we want to do is just remove that active class. So we can say class list dot remove, and we're going to remove active. And let's actually push this onto another line so that it's easier to read for all of you. And essentially what we're doing is first, we're getting our target for what tab we clicked on. Then we're making all of the tabs disappear and then only making the tab that we click on active. So let's click on home and you can see it shows up. And now when we click on about, you can see that the about section shows up and pricing. And this perfectly works for all of our different tabs. But what if we want to have a default tab? Well, that's really easy to do. Actually, we can just come in here and add a class of active to whatever tab we want to be active by default. For our case home, we just put class active. And now when we save that, you see home is the first one that shows up. What if we move this class active and let's say we move it down to pricing. Now you can see that pricing is the first tab that shows up. Let's put this back under our home because that's where we're going to want it for the rest of our application. So now that we finally have all of the JavaScript that we're going to need for now out of the way, let's work on styling this to make it look a little bit better. To do that, we want to first be able to select our list over here. So we can add a class, which is just going to be tabs because this is going to contain all of our tabs. And we also want to be able to select each of our individual tabs. So let's of course add a class in here, which is just going to be tab to each one of our individual tabs. Copy that down. And also, we want to put an active tab on whichever tab we're going to have active at the beginning, which in our case is the home tab. Now instead of our styles.css, let's work on making our tabs up here look unlike they are right now and make them actually span across the top of the page instead of being an ugly list. So to do that, we can select that tabs class that we just created. And the first thing we can do is display flex. And we want to justify content with space around. This immediately is going to spread everything out for us, which already looks a lot better. Also, we want to remove those periods at the beginning so we can use list style type and just set this equal to none. This is going to remove the periods at the beginning of our list, which is great. Also, you'll notice that there's a bunch of spacing on the left and on the top of our tabs. And this is because by default, an unordered list has a bunch of margin on the top and also padding on the side. So we're going to remove all of our margin and padding. Now you can see that's already gotten these right in the center for us and none of the extra spacing is on the top or the left hand side. The very last thing we need to do is just add a little bit of border on the bottom. So we can come in here, we can just say we want a border, which is going to be one pixel, solid black. And there we go. Well, we just want this to be on the bottom though. So let's make sure we use border bottom. There we go. And to make it so this border spans across all of our page, all we need to do is select our body and remove the padding and margin on it. So we can just say padding zero and margin zero. And there you go. As you can see, everything has been pushed up right to the edge of our screen, which is exactly what we want for our tabs. Now let's select our individual tabs and make them so that they're styled. And the first thing we want to do is, of course, just make it so it's cursor pointer. That when we hover over it, you see we get the actual cursor for clicking on things. 
so that users know that these are tabs that they can click on. Also, we want to add a little bit of spacing, so we'll say padding of 10 pixels for example. That's just going to space out these elements from the tops and sides of our page just a little bit to make them more obvious and easier to click. Also, we want to add a little bit of a hover effect on top of our tabs, so we want to change the background color whenever we hover, so we can come in here with background color, and we're going to change this to just AAA. That's a fairly dark color, so now if we save that and hover, you can see we kind of get a darkish gray color whenever we hover over anything. But we need that active style so that we know which tab we've currently selected, because right now we don't have anything showing. So to do that, we can come down here again into our tabs, but we want to do it for only the active tab that we have, and we want to change the background color, and we want to make this CCC. This is just a slightly lighter color than the AAA, and now if we save that you see immediately our active tab is showing up with that color, but we're going to get a problem when we select another tab, you can see that our active class is not actually moving to the correct tab. This is what we're going to need JavaScript to handle. So inside of our JavaScript, what we want to do is essentially copy this exact code right here that is moving our class and removing the other class. So let's copy this code to remove the active class, and instead we want to loop over all of our different tabs. Instead of looping over the tab content, we want to loop over the tabs themselves and remove that active class. And we also, down here, want to add the class of active to that individual tab we just clicked on. Now if we save that and click on a different tab, you'll see that active class moves to this tab because it's being colored, and it removes it from the previous tab that was already colored. And it works on all of our different tabs no matter how many times we click. The last thing that we need to do to make the page look just a little bit better is come down here and select our tab content, and we just want to space this out a little bit, so we're going to say margin on the left is 20 pixels, and we want to do the same thing on the right of 20 pixels. Now as you can see, our content is pushed away from the edge of the screen and looks just a little bit better. And that's all it takes to make completely functional tabs using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. If you're interested in more of these tutorials on HTML, CSS, or JavaScript, check them out linked over here, and also subscribe to the channel for more videos where I simplify the web for you. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day.